All right, we're here. Two thirds of us. Uh, don't know where Jack's. I think he we're, we're down Jack. our trivia host. Yeah. So those of you that came for trivia, we've got some bad news. We probably will not have trivia for you. We might, but as of right now, I don't know if we're going to. Joey Spatula has been here from the beginning. Timo has been here from the beginning. Both of them has have uh, upended commitments to be here. Joey Spatula canceled his pop up. Timo quit his job despite needing to <laughs> feed his family and needs his parlays to hit to feed feed all the people. But we're here. The Celtics beat the brakes off the Sixers yesterday, per usual. And it was one of those games that was not one of those games because they shot no threes. It was it was very strange, Bobby. Yeah, it really was. First off, I want to say shout out to everyone who's joining us on the live stream. It was worth quitting your job for this and canceling pop-ups. So right now, let's uh let's enjoy this time together. And when it comes to last night's game, that was the headline that it was an uncharacteristic type of win. Five made threes is their fewest since 2018. 22 attempts is their least in the Joe Missoula era. And he talked about how I think sometimes his philosophies, they get misconstrued both by the media and by fans. And so he talked about how it's not about taking threes to him as much as it is consistently hunting and finding the right shot. And that can change from one possession to the next. With that said, he's also stated that three-point attempt rate is the most important stat because the math is what it is. So for the Celtics, it's an uncharacteristic style of win. But if you just take their points in the paint and at the free throw line, they would have lost by one, 99 to 98. And to put up that much from those two categories is pretty impressive, especially when you're a team where there's a narrative where it's they take too many threes and it might be the thing that cost them in the playoffs. So this was an important preparation for the postseason for the Celtics. And yes, there was no no Joel Embiid on the other side, but I thought that Boston handled it well. They certainly did, and they did adjust to it. I mean, you saw a lot of different types of offense. They shot a ton of shots in the paint, and they did a good job of getting to the rim. We were at the game, and we talked about it. With Embiid not being there, there's no excuse not to do that. Everything was easy inside for Boston. They weren't missing a whole lot at the rim. And, I mean, they got to the line a whole lot because Philly was in the bonus in that third quarter for, like, at least half the quarter. Kristaps just eight at the free throw line. He must have shot eight free throws in that quarter alone. He made all of them. So they did a really good job of adjusting to what Philly threw at them. I know it was a talking point throughout the press conferences where – Gary Washburn was asking the players about, listen, Nick Nurse has played against you guys a ton of times. He clearly is schemed for this. He's trying to make you guys play in a way you are not comfortable playing. What do you think? And they were just like, listen, we have to adjust, read the game, and play to whatever they're giving us. And we did a good job of that tonight. And they, cer they certainly did. That's why they were able to blow them out. In the fourth quarter, Tatum just put his head down and said, that's enough of that, and got to the basket. It was fantastic to watch. And, you know, going forward, it'll be interesting to see if the Celtics continue to be malleable and want to just take whatever they can get, you know. Yeah, I think you have to. And this is a team that's really made it a mission. We do not want to go out there and just be more talented than our opposition. And look, that area of the game, talent, is not what's cost them championships recently. They've been good enough on that front. So they know. When they get out there, they need to be the smarter team. They need to be poised under pressure, and they need to be able to stay ahead to avoid a team like Miami mucking up the game and overcoming whatever gap there might be in talent. And so for the Celtics, they've seen what's happened the recent years, and this is a group that has matured. You now have a 27-year-old Jalen Brown and a soon-to-be 26-year-old Jason Tatum. It is a group that has seen a lot and figuring it out, and this is – when we talk about why Joe Missoula fits this team now better than Ime Udoka would, because I think Joe Missoula does a better job of being able to navigate those type of issues and hit on those points. Whereas Ime Udoka is more the guy that was able to get them to say, Hey, don't look at Kevin Durant. Like he's some star. That's not on your level. You're not on his level. You need to be able to go through him. And to your point about, getting easy buckets in the paint. I mean, first play of the game, 
it's Jason Tatum. They get the switch with Tyrese Maxey, <laughs> and he goes like he's not even there to the basket yeah, right for a layup. It. So the Celtics, once they were able in the first half, they didn't do a good job when it came to spacing and offensively being physical. And so what it led to was double-digit turnovers, or maybe it was nine. They were just right around there. And then I think it was nine turnovers, 10 points given up off them, something like that. And then in the second half, they only had five. So between better spacing and once they stopped, ta- once they stopped turning over the ball, it was going to be really difficult for Philadelphia to overcome not having their MVP out there. Yeah, it is funny. Joey in the chat is talking about Joe and saying how he seems very mature from a leadership standpoint, maybe not with the media. I don't know. He seems mature with us. But it I was think funny. He's done we... a pretty good job with the media this year and getting more comfortable in showing his personality, which he didn't seem like he wanted to do last season. He was guarded. And considering the leap he made from sitting behind the bench to becoming the youngest head coach in the league at the time, you can understand why he would look at it that way and want a slow play showing you who he really is. Yeah. I mean, if he came out last year and was just talking about movies, people would have been heated. <laughs> like they're like down 0-3 to the heat in the conference finals. He's talking about Spider-Man. Even I would not condone that. I would be like, are we serious? I, I'd be irate. Apparently, Jack is coming. I don't know if you've seen the updates in the talk. There are, there are rumors. Back. He said he was distracted. So we will see, maybe interrogate him when he arrives. We'll um, put him on the hot seat. We will put him on the hot seat. Uh, but it was a weird night of adjustments for Missoula, too, Bobby. Oh, look at that. Speak of the devil. Here he is. Hey. All right. Jackie Simone, good morning. And he's muted. Kid's not ready. Kid's not ready for prime time right now. He's still, still muted. muted. Uh, there we go. He's not yeah. letting me unmute them. I, says your mic is not I connected. Got it, I got it. He's All in. right. Sorry. I'm exhausted. That's my bad. I was good. up at 10, uh, 1030. Roll I knew you were like, up. Right. That's why. I know. I was up at 1030. I'm like, all right, I got 15 more minutes in me. Wake up 1110. I'm like, well, that's that sucks. Yeah, the, that, the mind blowing part was that you had already responded to text earlier. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's 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 the killer. Like, I'll get up. I always get up in time. It's just a matter of like, oh, I got ten more minutes to sleep, and then if you do that and don't set an alarm, it's a killer. The alarm. Oh, I have nothing. alarms. Yeah, the alarms mean nothing. Henry is the alarm, and he's at work. <laughs> <laughs> You said an alarm for eleven fifteen to sleep no, it's through the that. Snooze. It's the snooze. <laughs> it's the snooze. It's the snooze. It's the snooze. No, Bobby, I was in college, and the RA told me that I got noise complaints from my neighbors about my alarms, even though I wasn't waking up to them. So my neighbors heard my alarms, but I was. Yeah, it's just it doesn't work. He's got it plugged into one of those giant speakers. Like a frat house party. You have a speaker. big JBL like pill. Yeah ready for you to get you up in the morning no i had an alarm that my mom bought me like an alarm clock that was like obscenely loud and it still didn't work joey spatula it seems extremely ironic to me that henry is this alarm well henry <laughs> it's true it's well he does have narcolepsy well he does have narcolepsy henry does still um <laughs> like he wakes up early because he is like so regimented he's, with his bed to sleep yeah and so that's fine. Also, to pre- put a perfectly clear chat, I didn't sleep for like 11 hours here. Like this isn't yeah. like me sleeping we like for a time. Even I got up late like, today. I didn't I didn't go to sleep till like 5. So, yeah, so exactly. I still didn't get like normal sleep. It's just I I didn't wake up. But I am here. Did you do the intro and stuff for the video or have you just been chatting? Oh, I kind of forgot to do an intro, but we We'd like that's okay. We're like, hey, we're it. here. I did the okay, perfect, pregame. Perfect. Intro. Before we get to the intro, if we're doing it, um, important question, especially for the group chat. Is there trivia today, Jack Simone? That's Bobby, I you. entered Monday. I entered Monday without even having a question. So of course there's trivia. I, oh, I yeah. I'm I'm on <laughs> the fly. <laughs> we're always ready for trivia. This Don't is why you worry can show about up it. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not. All right, so we we just went through. We did our takeaways from the Philly game, Jack. Perfect. 
you uh you know as bobby has said in the past sometimes the host doesn't listen so as you are not listening uh go through and tell us what you thought what'd you think uh it was good <laughs> <laughs> they won the game i mean as you can see by the title of the stream the celtics used the sixers as crash dummies uh, mm. that's what i wrote about this morning for celtics blog did you um, put crash dummies on the on the uh thumbnail? i did no, I didn't put a crash in the thumbnail, but the last paragraph of my article for Celtics blog was um, whether intentional or not, Boston has been treating their opponents like crash enemies, uh car companies use to ensure safety in the event of an accident. Missoula is the guy behind the glass with the clipboard. The safety metrics indicate playoff goals, the Celtics of the car, and on Tuesday night, the Sixers or the crash test dummy. Um, maybe he didn't go into the night expecting an experiment. Uh, he talked about before the All-Star break, like, looking at 10 to 12 things they could work on uh, post all-star break that he wanted to, you know, check out the schedule and see when they could work on them. Um, and Nick nurse provided him an opportunity to do so when he decided to take away the three point shot. So I don't think in our recap this morning, I don't think it was like fully the Sixers didn't do a good enough job to like the, to have the Celtics only take 22 threes, right? Let, let's put make that clear, right? The Sixers played solid defense to take away some threes, at least in the first half. I, in my head, I think Joe was just like, you know what? This is a good opportunity. Let's just attack the paint. Like, let's, let's just, let's just use this opportunity to get better at what we have been bad at in the past because the other, they shot 37 free throws in this game. The other game, that they shot that many because that tied their season high was the magic game, which also happened to be their previous season low in three point attempts when they got smacked by 17 points. It was their, one of their worst losses of the season. Um, and so I feel like Joe used Nick nurse's game plan to start to fix that issue of driving, fix that issue of physicality. Uh, and they showed they could do it. And I think he used this game as an experiment and I think it was funny and, and it worked because the Celtics are just infinitely better than the Sixers are right now. Um, and so it was good to see them be able to drive the paint. Good to see them get to the free throw line. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum driving well, attacking mismatches with Porzingis and Horford, all that good stuff. Um, so it was a good win, uh, but it does feel like Joe was just messing around in, in a good way to uh, sort of fix some issues before the playoffs. I'm just yeah. laughing at him. Yeah. So first off, go check out Jack's article, obviously. And then secondly, I look at it as you can have degrees of truth in multiple categories. And so one of them is there was definitely some experimentation. And I know that Joe said that it doesn't apply to him playing Tatum the entire first quarter and switching up the Jalen minutes. But I also think, come on, it probably does, right? When there's smoke, there's fire. And then when it comes to how the Sixers played them, it's not that what they did is something where the Celtics go, oh my God, switching in physicality. We never would have thought that a team would defend us this way to protect the perimeter. But I do think that they will be able to look at this game and find some things that help them in their playoff preparation. So I thought this game was valuable for the coaching staff in particular, and then just reinforcing the confidence because even when you're a professional athlete, and you're in the 99th percentile in that, it still helps to go out and actually do something. So this was another test of, hey, can we, can we win when the threes aren't falling, or in this case, not even taking them? And can we continue to be, because we take tremendous pride in being the smarter team and being poised in different circumstances, and they check both of those boxes, and I think that helps as well. Yeah, and this was a weird game in terms of, pure shot differential <laughs> we were upstairs in the ninth floor like looking at the little screen they have with the box score and i was like wait a minute philly has 81 shots to boston's 56 and it was one because of some turnovers two some offensive rebounds but three because they shot a billion free throws in this game and that was a big help to get them over the hump too where they weren't necessarily creating a ton of scoring opportunities for themselves but you know if you're shooting 37 free throws and only missing three, it's a pretty good way to get yourself on the board. And they did a good job of that. To Jack's point about, hey, Philly isn't really making us not take threes. They're just being like, hey, look how inviting this free rim is. 
they did a great job of taking advantage of like, oh, no Embiid, B-Ball Paul's not even in the game right now. Yeah, sure, we'll drive on Tobias Harris. It doesn't matter. And they punished Philly and said, Jack, do you remember what the percentage was in the paint? I know we did the show last night. 24-30. Shot 80% in the paint. In the restricted area. Restricted area. 4% inside the arc for the game. Love mm-hmm. that. Like that, Maybe. that is the stuff that you dream about sometimes. You're just like, what if they just didn't shoot threes? Also, Not that I hate the threes, but it's yeah, cool to see that they can win without shooting threes, which I think is everybody's point. Yes. You also, again, that's where you have to keep in mind hey, the other team didn't have Joel Embiid. It's a pretty mm. big deal, right? So can they do it? Yes, but it becomes a lot easier when that's the opponent. And again, like the ability to live in the paint like that. It looks different if Joel is on the floor. So that's where they really need to measure up their, you know, what Philly did well and what they'll take from this game. But I think there's a strong argument. They have the best coaching staff in the league. They have two of the top lead assistants in Charles Lee and Sam Cassell. So I I think that what they pull from this for the postseason will be interesting. Also, when we talk about the free throws, Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis each had double-digit attempts. That's the first team in the NBA to do so since 2021. What team was in 21, do you know? Um, I want to say the Brooklyn Nets. If you give me a second, I'll pull it up. Yeah, it's just hard and like grabbing people's arms. That would make sense. (laughs) Um, Yeah. You know, what's funny is Jack knows all about the assistant coaches. Boston's tremendous coaching staff. I'm trying. I can't believe that guy wrote for Fansided. I know the there's a coach. Point. There's a coach for it. I'm working on an article, so I'm not going to give away all my secrets. All but right, there's all a coach right, that. Uh... All right. <laughs> that, that's like your minor punishment for being late. I, I spoiled it. Something. <laughs> like I'm right, writing it's the Derek White article last year. Sam's like, yeah, Derek White actually loves Oreos. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. <laughs> at least not the coach. At two, Samuel. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, good win against the Sixers last night. Cavaliers also won, though, unfortunately. Um, why does he say despise the Cavaliers? <laughs> Not really. You despise Max Strews. I don't like Max. Which fair enough. That He's a rat. But, um, good win. Good to see Jason Tatum stepping up again. I, I mean, it feels like we're just kind of seeing him decide when and where he'd like to turn it on. Like the first half, he was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna yes. make all the passes," and then the second half, he's like, "All right, I'm sick of it. Like, you just lose <laughs> now. I'm just gonna, I don't lose to Philly. Stay. Can we please be serious?" Yeah. And he just dunked three times. I'm just gonna start I think scoring the nature now. And the difference in personalities, I think it really helps both of them to feel good with what their workload was and how much they got to shine, where Jalen Brown likes to come out aggressive. And so Jason Tatum plays into that and says, okay, let me be more of the facilitator. You handle the scoring in the beginning. And then in the second half, and when it matters most, the guy with the ball in his hands quite often is Jason Tatum, and he's showing more of his scoring prowess. So I I think it helps to balance everything between the two of them. Yeah, and it really felt 100%. like a like concentrated Tatum effort yesterday. It's different mm-hmm. when you go to the game, I guess, compared to when I'm watching on TV how I feel about things. But I did not feel Tatum's presence at all from the three-point line. Like I didn't feel like he was hurting them. I didn't feel like he was settling. He still took what, seven threes yesterday? And he only made one. So like it wasn't the greatest, but he did a really good job of just focusing down and, and getting the best shots possible. Now I know we have breaking news. We do. Have you seen this? We do. We have the title of the video. Don't worry about it. Drew Holiday uh, is expected to be a part of Team USA. Uh, per Sham Strania and Joe Vardon of The Athletic uh, said he's expected to be among the 12 members of Team USA's roster for the 2024 Olympics. Team officials have valued Holiday's two ability, point of attack defense, and dynamic playmaking. Uh, that's per The Athletic. Um, and I will say we're all kind of morons because he effectively told us this yesterday <laughs> and we didn't realize it. Uh, he rocked up to the arena wearing his wife's uh, USA soccer jersey. So mm-hmm. he was like trying to break the news before Shams and no one picked up on it. Um, but uh, yeah, this will probably be the title of the video. So is that <laughs> the only on. family to ever have like, uh, husband, wife represent the nation? Uh, yeah, probably. I think <laughs> yes. so. Probably. I was thinking because I know, I know, Maybe I know like Z- obscure sport athletes. I know Zach Ertz, his wife, uh, was on the soccer team, but there's no football in the Olympics. So, yeah, this might be the only one that I can think of why. in uh, in major sports. But 
Yeah, Drew Holiday going to be a part of Team USA. We speculated about this earlier in the summer um, or earlier in the year, I suppose, when they did the whole um, this is the potential candidates for the roster. We talked about would there be any Celtics. We assumed Tatum would be. I think none of us had Drew Holiday on the roster because we assumed it'd be all the stars. Yeah. But Chris Paul, banana boat boys. Also, Drew Holiday, outstanding poker player when it comes to just lying to your face. If you remember yeah. when it first came out about Team USA's interest, he was like, that's news to me. They they haven't spoken to me. I haven't heard from them. Clearly, putting him on the roster was something they had already decided at that time. So he did. I wonder why they waited to announce mm-hmm. that. Is there any benefit to that? Like, do they get anything? Does he get anything? Like, it, does he avoid us being like, hey, you not focused on the Celtics? Like, the playoffs think still haven't just- happened. I feel like it's just the freedom to change things. If not like they, they don't need, oh, yeah. there's no, I mean, there's also no benefit to them announcing it in November. Right. Like, so I, I think it's just waiting until they iron some other things out, seeing if other players would be interested. Like for all we know, like it was, Oh, you know, this person was going to do it, but he dropped out. So let's lock in drew. You know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds like he was the first choice, but for all we know, like, yeah. Oh, Steph Curry was going to do it, but now he can't. So Drew Holiday's going to do it. I, I think Steph's going to do it. Anyway. The best I mean, part about it's, this. It's in Paris. So the stars are coming. Like, there's a reason that LeBron the has been recruiting here. and successful. <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of the big names will be there. We went through the roster. And so, yeah, with Drew, I, I wonder if it was just a matter of we have to actually communicate with him. And then if the results are positive, at least we can put this out to the public. Yeah, I can't wait to see. You know, if I'm Team USA, how do I build the team around Drew Holiday? Like, is LeBron a good fit next to Drew Holiday? We're seeing the Celtics, like, beat up on everybody. Like, probably Tatum, probably Brown are both good fits. We've seen it. Derek White can play with Drew Holiday. They could just make... We haven't seen LeBron play with Drew Holiday yet. Like, maybe they don't want LeBron on this team. Everyone's going to be talking about his stupid kid. Like, you don't want that kind of distraction when you're trying to win a gold medal. Just ask... Like, I don't know, LeBron, he's lost in the Olympics before. 2004, Drew Holiday has never lost the Olympics. You could just put uh, the Celtics starting four minus Porzingis next to Embiid and have a pretty good starting lineup. Well, Embiid's a (laughs) known loser. This is not good. (laughs) Like, look who you're picking from. Like, Anthony Davis has won a ring, but he can't stay healthy. Well, Bam. Jeff Curry. in there. Bam can be in there. Bam is a good winner. And, you know, everybody thinks he's going to be on the Celtics someday. Everyone's like, he loves to hang out with Deuce. He's Tatum's best friend. He's going to be on the Celtics, which will never happen. Yeah, Bam, fine with that, right? Let's, like, think of who else. I mean, Camp, you need shooting. He's Someone who can space the floor, so Sam Hauser. Sam Hauser. Yep. Mm-hmm. Probably can do, like, Clay. You put Peyton Pritchard on there. Peyton you know, Pritchard played for this black team last year. A high level defender to be able to yeah, come off the Jayden bench Jayden. and as a backup for Drew Holiday for that impact, Jaden Springer. Jaden Springer. Yeah. yeah. That'd be pretty good. Big grit guy. I agree. You want somebody you can guard multiple positions like Jokic and Giannis in the playoffs? Xavier Tillman's right there. Yep. Throw him in there. <laughs> yeah, I think Jordan Walsh has a strong case for that final <laughs> roster mm-hmm. spot. You could even mm-hmm. have, you know, like other diverse defenders like Marcus Smart. I'm sure he would play. <laughs> all right this is ridiculous uh so do we think this means there'll be two celtics on team you say do we think they'll cut it off at drew and tatum like realistically i don't know if you're just listening i mean i i think jalen has a, a legitimate chance to make it and the some of the odds makers have put him on the roster based on each candidate's percentage really i feel like Derek white would be a better fit on team usa than jalen brown I feel like it makes a lot more sense to have a Derek White than a Jalen Brown on this Team USA team. I don't think that's what will happen, but I think that's would make more sense from a basketball because you're gonna have LeBron, you're gonna have you're Steph, wrong. you're gonna have Tatum, you're gonna have Durant. Like, do you need another Jalen Brown or do you need a Derek White? And that's you, not you said it, Jalen Brown, it, it, but D- Derek makes more sense. But it's not gonna happen though. There is there is some politicking involved, and I don't know mm-hmm. if Derek gets in over Jalen. It's I don't think it's gonna be looked at as an either or between those two. But when it comes to making the roster, you know, there are like the Tayshaun Princes and Michael Reds who get on. So maybe, but ultimately I wouldn't be surprised if it's just star power wins out. Yeah. Jack is the best because no matter what, he's like, what if Derek White? 
<laughs> well, it's because he fits I, I, everywhere. I'm you right like, now, you have a good point. Like what you're saying does not not make sense. But like presidency for 2024, Derek White. <laughs> Derek White is a basketball player that every single team wants to have on their roster. Correct. Like I, I think Derek White might have some of the highest non-superstar trade value in the NBA. Like because he does he, everything. He may be like a top trade value guy. I know Bill Simmons does like, or the, it might not just be him, but the Ringer does trade value power rankings, and Derek White was pretty high up on. It. I think he was like at least thirty. I mean, 30 for right now, at the very least, even if you want to put it in like NBA, not Team USA, like. Makes seventeen million dollars. Is an all defensive second or first team caliber player. Shoots forty percent from three. Can create his own shot. Doesn't need the ball in his hands, but can thrive with it in his hands in the pick and roll. Like every he fits in every single. He's the easiest guy in the planet to work with. Everybody wants a Derek White on their team. Like like there were rumors at the trade deadline last year saying like, oh, Celtics got offers like two first for Derek White, but they're like no because they want him around. Like. People want Derek White. <laughs> it's 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 not a coincidence that he impacts winning at such a high level that his plus minus is second in the league behind Shea. Like it's a real thing. And so I, I think Team USA more, should benefit from it. More on Team USA, star players who are considered locks for Team USA. This is from NBA Central, but it's via Shams. It is Drew, Kevin Durant, LeBron, sadly, Steph Curry, uh, Joel Embiid and Tatum. So Tatum will be there no matter what, except if he gets hurt, knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. T- Tatum will definitely be there, knock on wood. Um, I don't want to say with Derek, he had a block last night early in the game where Tobias Harris, and so think about the difference in height and Harris's ability to just like long stride his way past Derek White. He spun on him, went nowhere. Derek White is still right in front of him off the spin move, and then – he faces up and Derek White just absolutely stuffed him. It was literally like he little brothered him. We we were sitting next to each other and I was like, Oh my god, Bobby, he just played perfect defense. Did you see that? Like moved his feet perfectly. He was on perfect diagonal slides. I was enamored with that play. Excellent defense from Derek White. And it, it's just another example of why he's gonna be on one of probably the all defensive team, not the second team. The he's first, be I, first think, I think he makes the first team. He big boy Derek. Walker. Him and Holiday should be the guards on the first team. Him and Holiday, like he, this, is also a good point by Joey Spatchel. Circling yeah. back, West Virginia graduate would be perfect for the point guard. Did you guys see the Joe mixtape that was on Twitter from yeah, the, uh, the actual no. at Joe Missoula account? It's not no. him, but it's the guy that has yeah. like an account with the handle. That's funny. It's no, just I didn't. Rain see it. threes. I'll have to watch it. Um, I will also say, I tweeted this out yesterday. You look at the odds for defensive player of the year, and it doesn't matter because I don't think Derek White or Drew Holiday are the best candidate necessarily. I think Gobert How? or Jared Allen are like one and two like for that. But like the fact that they aren't like right there in the mix on the second best defensive team in the NBA for their impact just shows that voters cares about ooh two blocks a game, ooh two steals a game. Like they, they don't like people don't like care like defensive impact usually, which is like upsetting. But yeah, it's an award that's used towards centers. There's a reason that Marcus was the first guard to get it since Gary mm-hmm. Payton. And then also there's voters who don't watch games outside of the teams they cover. So I mean, they... Shea is a fine defender, <laughs> but he has better odds than those two because he's averaging two steals a game. And that's just not like uh, – uh, respectfully, no. <laughs> like, stop. Wemby is the third best odds right now. He has the worst defense in the NBA. That is what he's leading. I know he's leading the league in blocks, but it doesn't matter if the team sucks at defense. What are we Wemby doing? Sucks, Jack. It's crazy, dude. Uh, Put that on TikTok, Jack. I had something I was going to say. <laughs> Miss, I forget what it was. It was something. Oh, yeah. Non-award uh, voting media members should just like all house Derek White and be like, well, what if Derek White was defensive player of the year? Just start doing what they've be. been doing with Tatum MVP. Like, ESPN What's the agenda. Yeah. Like whoever doesn't have a vote, just like, yeah. Like what if Derek white and everyone's like, got like five grand on plus 5,000. Everyone gets rich. Would be sick. Um, let's see. Speaking of the last year, the fact that he blew up at three point. What do you mean? He blew up. <laughs> what, 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 he blew up. How so? I don't um, think he blew up. He treated me like a child, but that's neither here nor there. That's just Joe. <laughs> you get used to it. Uh, how long do we think the streak's lasting? Oh, that's a good question. Um, they've got a tough stretch. Like Dallas it, Friday. 
it would be difficult. I think they beat them Dallas. Stretch. Sunday will be very interesting. Warriors game is going to be interesting. They got Dallas, Golden State, Cleveland, Denver, Phoenix. So they've got a tough stretch. Um, mm. Oh, we thought, yeah, we talked about it. Loss. Good adjustment from Joe. Yeah. Um, that was playing on the show Friday. I'll look it up. You guys stretch. don't. It's just a tough stretch for the Celtics. Like they, they're playing a lot of good teams. And I, I don't think it's a matter of, oh, they're not as good as these teams. I think it's a matter of, will they care enough? And yeah, not 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 in a bad them. way, not in a way like oh they they are slacking they suck like not putting in the effort but like they don't really need to win every single one of these games like they don't need to put in a hundred percent of effort exhaust themselves before the playoffs that's a high goal um, they don't need to put in a hundred percent effort for forty eight minutes over the next month and a half to exhaust themselves before the playoffs because. They've built a big enough lead where it's going to be harder for them to lose the first seed than keep it. So that's the only reason I don't know how long the win streak is going to last. But as of now, they look pretty good. So <laughs> at the same time, I, I look at two, three of those matchups in particular. One, they're going to get up for Golden State. That means something to them. They'll take that matchup personally, and it's on their home floor. I wouldn't be surprised if they win convincingly, especially against this iteration of the Warriors. And then also, this is a team that's guarded in some of the stuff that they don't necessarily want to put much of a sample size out for teams to study going into the playoffs. So even though they might not end up facing the Cavaliers in the postseason, I wonder if that's one where they play it differently with the future in mind. And then Denver, you're going to their building. They were the first team this season to beat you in your venue. It, it'll be curious to see that matchup, which is certainly the leader in the clubhouse for a finals preview. Yeah. I mean, that Denver game on the road is going to be marquee. Must see. What is that? Next Thursday? Friday? It's not far from now. I know we're talking about the upcoming stretch of games. But uh, Friday's game, I'm sure they'll all take Kyrie to dinner. They love him so much. The Warriors, I think they will get up for. And then going forward, I'm interested to see this Cleveland game because I've been trashing the Cavs for quite some time now because everybody wants to be like, look how hot the Cavs have gotten. And they just beat up on all these bad teams. So it'll be interesting to see them go up against the Celtics. I know they beat Dallas last night. Dallas was on a hot streak going into that game. So they can play against real teams. But I'm curious to see, you know, are they actually going to be able to play against the Celtics? Because the first two times they played them, the Celtics had their way with them pretty well. I will also say, if we're being fair and talking about, oh, they've won their one streak against bad teams, let's not act like the Celtics have played the Avengers during their current win streak. Like, let's let's be a well, little Celtics bit also the best fair. record in the NBA, and they have yeah, the exactly. easiest schedule remaining because they've already played I know, a hard team. I know. I'm just saying, like, the Cavs are like, yes, they haven't beat as many good teams as the Celtics, but if we're talking winning streaks and getting hot, like... They've played the Nets twice, the Hawks, the Wizards, the Grizzlies, the the shorthanded Knicks. Like, like, let's just, I'm just saying, like, they, this is a big stretch if they continue it in here into the next few games, like, also true. Um, also, Cleveland, also I mean, think about how long they went without two of their four best players in Garland yeah. and Mobley. And it, it really ended up being a benefit because it changed their identity. And then they've done well reintegrating those two. But, yeah, I mean, that's a team that has a very impressive core four. And now gets to see the effect of adding Max Struess, who hits the crazy game winner from 58 feet last night. George Niang has been really good for them. And they got Craig Porter Jr., who came out of nowhere to be an impact player. So this is a good Cavaliers team. Mm-hmm. 100%. Uh, like I said, I think this is a big stretch for the Celtics, an important stretch for the Celtics. Curious to see how they'll handle it. Uh, and curious to see how long we think the streak will last, as Timo asked. I don't know about 69 wins, though, Phil. Sorry. <laughs> they should win every game. That would be insane. Uh, all right, Bobby, anything else you wanted to cover here today? No, uh, I think we, we hit on everything, and then on Friday we can preview the Dallas matchup. All righty. We Hope can beat the do out, that. A little, little uh, team. Shocker. Sam wants Celtics Bad to beat Kyrie. To it's not a bad time to freeze. I could have I could have <laughs> finished the sentence for him. I hope they uh, I hope they run him out of time. You see, Cleveland gave him a nice ovation yesterday. Mm-hmm. Probably I did, yeah. Definitely, absolutely deserved it. Let's. let's what Shot are you doing? His way out of town. He won them a championship. Their only championship. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, he 
definitely does deserve it. <laughs> uh, all right. Trivia time, shall we? Let's get it. Yep. All right. We're going to do the same format as we did the other day. Or the other um, getting turned off. pod, I should it, say. It is funny, like, to actually see Kyrie be well-received somewhere. Like, he was – you could tell he was so happy that people were actually cheering for him in a place he used to play because everywhere he leaves, he just lights on fire. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's do – what did we do last time? Turnovers? We did all-time turnover leaders. Okay, let's do – we'll do a positive What's one funny, time. by the way, Sam, is that the place that's going to have, like, the least animosity towards him after he leaves is going to be Dallas. Yeah. Cause he'll probably just be washed by then or whatever. Like they just, it, they won't really need him by the time it's time for him to leave Dallas. Unless he's like, I want to play with LeBron like right now, which could happen. I think the mm-hmm. only way they hate him is not even if he asks out in the summer, it's if like he stays and ruins it for Luca and Luca leaves and they hold Kyrie oh, as responsible. That'd be something. Sam has a new dream. All right. <laughs> category category for today. We're going to do offensive rebounds. Who leads? Okay, Actually, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Sorry. I I, I need to. I want to pick one that is not. If you get the leader, you win. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry. Looking at this. <laughs> now that Sam's yeah. going first. Well, I mean, that's <laughs> no, just it's unfair. Okay. Like last I'm time, I specifically you. tried to pick one where like no, you both have a chance. Like spoiler alert: Robert Parrish has a thousand more than anybody yeah. else. Well, that's what I was going to pick. See, Would have been unfair. Yeah, yeah. Job well, that's underway. Everyone why can I see cut it. you off? That's why I cut you off before you had the chance to guess. So let's uh, let's go to a different category. Um, I don't want to pick like a negative one again, but I might because it's funny uh, and because it's easy. <laughs> like what I will um, say. If you can avoid picking one, that'll just be like this guy played here the longest. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Can I do career three point percentage on the Celtics? That's tough, though, because then, like, if you pick someone who's only taken two and they've made one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're not going to be able to filter out the attempts. Yeah. Can you stat Uh, use that? Can you stat use? Let me see if I can stat use that. Best career. Three point percentage of the Celtics minimum fifty games or something like point percentage by a Celtics player minimum fifty games before we actually start. All right. Um all right, I need to filter by attempts because Mark Akers has played 141 games and shooting hundred percent, which is not (laughs) not you know there's someone played for the Celtics named Mark Akers. I didn't. <laughs> I no, didn't know there was that. Uh, all right, that might be too difficult. Okay. Uh, How will you add up the worked. total for that too? I was I gonna do the average. Oh, okay. I was gonna do the average. Yeah, like like average them all together. Um, it's tough because like half of them are just somebody played here forever, and so they are far and away the leader. So if you get it, you win, which is unfair. But at the same time, like the, per, the the averages one is a lot of it's tough to you can't filter out, you know what I'm saying? So expand all leaderboards. Mm-hmm. Great statistic requirements. Like I'm trying to I wish I had these can... better ideas. <clears throat> I half want to be like, can you like filter the oldest people to ever play for the Celtics? Should we do like a more like more traditional all time leaders in steals or something? Yeah, we could do a normal one. Uh, it's just, well, the issue with that is like, I tried to do that rebounds, but people who played here forever, just like, there's no winning. If you get, don't get the yeah, first one, like it's impossible. True. Um, sorry, chat one second. Uh, let's do uh, free throw attempts, free throw mm. attempts. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Actually, yeah, we'll do free throw attempts, and I'll save the other one. Okay, all time free throw attempts for the Celtics. Uh, there's only so much you can do at some point, but let's rock with it. Sam, you are leading us here. Who is your guess for all time free throw attempts? I'm gonna guess. I'm kind of torn, but I, I would do Robert Parrish because he's played okay. the most it, games. It is attempts, not makes. I I said okay. that right. Okay, yeah, Ro- okay. free throw attempts. All right, Robert Parrish. 4,491 free throw attempts. Bobby T. 
<laughs> he was on it, but that one was easy. Paul Pierce. That was my other guess. Okay, Paul Pierce. Free throw attempts. Oh, I'm <laughs> devastated. <laughs> there we go. Stand <laughs> yeah, back to you. Good. Thank you to the truth. Um, hmm. <clears throat> I will guess Larry Bird. Uh, that's no fun. <laughs> Alrighty, Larry Bird. Oh my goodness, this is bad. Back to you, Bobby. John Havlicek. Oh, I forgot free throw attempts existed before. <laughs> it's when they so were on peach baskets. Oh my gosh, this is <laughs> so bad. Say I'm back to you. Um I'll guess. Oh man. Now I'm panicked. This is so bad. I'll guess <laughs> Sam Jones. Jones, all right. Let's see. Oh no. <laughs> Bobby, back to you. I don't even have him through three yeses. I mean, I might help your cause right now, Sam. Kevin McHale. Nah, no way. He's probably got like about as much as Jones at least. Four, Woo! Four. All right, Sam. I'm Two more for you. That. Hmm. I'll guess Tatum. He's been here a little bit. All right. Let's it's see. not going to be a great guess. Tatum, total of 10. No, he's got to look for it. This is bad. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's over. <laughs> yep. 21.95. Bobby? Tom Heinsohn. Tommy Heinsohn. Let's see. Take a look here. Oh boy, that means he's far. <laughs> so he he's at this point, though, I don't even think I have as much as you through four guesses. Alrighty. There we go. I'll take a three on that. Uh, I will guess Dave Cowens. Ah, uh, he was my next guess. All right. Let's see. <laughs> it's it's really a giveaway when that's not in the top ten. I have to go look for it. Uh, all right, let's see. I have to filter out his one Milwaukee season. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. Bobby, back to you. I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> Juwan Morgan is not on the list. That's an electric guess. That's right a tough there. one, yeah. Celtics Canada, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Celtics Canada is really mad at you guys. <laughs> well, I'm, we're done after this anyway, right? Yeah, this is the, uh, Bobby's last one. And spoiler alert, I don't think I'm going to do the math. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. I will go with Bob Cousy. All righty, there we go. Back on the top 10 and i swore again so i'll edit it out uh, <laughs> all right bang there wow, you go he had way more than i thought okay uh Celtics canada very mad because neither of you guessed bill russell <laughs> he was my next guess it was between was... coos and russell and even though russell's bigger i considered <laughs> was he Kuzi first based no, on longevity. He... pierce was first um koozie was second or sorry havlicek was second Kuzi, Russell, McHale, Parrish, Bird, Sam Jones, Ed McCauley, Cedric Maxwell. Um, Sam, so you did still have a chance after he went Pierce Havlicek because Kuzi and yeah, Russell yeah. were still on the board. So you could have like gotten in there a little bit. That's why I chose it. Because like, for example, free throw attempts, it's 7,900, 6,500, 57, 56, 45, mm -hmm. 44, 44. So it's like kind of even. Uh, offensive rebounds, 34, 2,300. Then it's 17, 16, 15. So it just like falls off a complete cliff. Yep. So there's like... That's fine. Um, yeah. Here we go. Good choice. <sighs> Evens up the series, though. I choked this one. It is uh, It is funny how, like, whoever has gone first so far has just lost, and not even in, like, a close call, but in, like, the person who won second just... has gotten, like, the top three on the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah th this series, back-to-back -back blowouts. Yes, sir. My Thanks, Michael. The trivia is a staple now. Talking to these trivia. I love trivia. Yeah. I think it's we so We appreciate fun. you, Michael. I'll come more prepared next time when I don't sleep through the start of the show. It worked uh, out, though. It. it worked out. Here we are on roughly five hours of sleep. 
making it work. Yeah, I don't know. No, how you I clearly I don't <laughs> see answer. I, did, I didn't today. Uh, but yes, uh, any final thoughts for you get out of here? Series tied one one uh, in the in the latest. Bobby, I think we hit on everything. Phenomenal. Love to see it. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to check out Bobby's work at si.com slash Celtics. Uh, subscribe to us here at How About Them Celtics. Make sure to leave a like on the video as well. Uh, check us out on podcast platforms. We're going to be dropping our full length podcast tomorrow at five. Uh, you can check out a recap of the Sixers game at the start of this video and in our video. And I'll let Sam take it out. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening and watching today. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel at the notification bell. So you don't miss any of our talk and seize episodes when they go live. We're here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for you. You can also find our full pods Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. We have other videos, too. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. Make sure you follow us there for the audio versions of the full pods and game recaps. Those will go right to your inbox. Leave a five-star review. Jack would appreciate it very much. You can follow Bobby on Twitter at Bobby Kravitsky. All of his work is for Inside the Celtics for SI Media. He told me he was putting in work last night at the Garden there till 3 a.m. concocting a masterpiece. So make sure you go check it out. He's putting in the work. He's boots on the ground all the time. You can also reach out to us via email, hbtcpod at gmail.com. If you want to do that, you can still get them in before we record today. We'll read them on tomorrow's pod. You can find us on socials at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook is just the name of the podcast. You can find our streams there and on YouTube and also on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's NBA. Bobby's once again is at Bobby Kravitsky. And mine is at Samuel France NBA. It's it for us.